I never thought I would see the day, but it actually happened where now Call of Duty does rank better than Halo. That's right, the most casual of casual shooters out there, I would honestly say has a better ranking system than Halo Infinite. Now I'm not saying that Halo Infinite's ranking system as is right now is bad. If anything, it's pretty good. For the most part, I feel like wherever you get placed within Halo Infinite's ranking system is about accurate. Right now I'm about a mid-tier diamond player, and I would probably say right about there is where I belong. Now, if I really put my head down and grinded out ranks, I could probably get into Onyx. There are certainly aspects from the new Modern Warfare 2 ranked play, which I know that 343 saw this and they definitely need to take some notes from them. Because the biggest thing that Modern Warfare 2 ranked play has done with their new setup is that one, it's simple to understand, has higher player retention and rewards you for playing no matter what skill level you are. But why is Call of Duty's ranking system better than Halo Infinite? Let's dive into it. Now, Modern Warfare 2 has its standard divisions when it comes to like bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, crimson, iridescent, and top 250. That's right. You actually get a special emblem for being the top 250 of players like we did back in Halo 5 with the champion rank. But for some reason, Halo Infinite doesn't have that. Now, based if you win and on your performance depends how much SR you receive to rank up to the next level. But if you lose a match, you also lose SR rank depending on your performance and if your team loses, which is pretty standard stuff. We're on par with that one when it comes to Halo Infinite. But the interesting thing about their rank system for Call of Duty is that they added in a rank when it comes to playing. That's right, there's rank on top of rank, and it's all based on how many wins you have. And the way you rank up within ranks is by getting wins. And that's all you gotta do. That's a, like a little mini progression system within the general rank progression system. So it doesn't matter what skill level you are, you're still progressing in some way. Within each tier of those ranks, you get new unlocks that are specific to playing rank, like a new skin, new blueprints for your weapons, new operators and things like that. So really cool customization people genuinely would want to have. And you incentivize them by just playing the game. Right now in Halo Infinite, we don't have that at all actually when it comes to rank the only thing you get to show off is well your rank this next feature that call of duty implemented with the rank system is absolutely needed for halo infinite because in call of duty it's 4v4 just like halo but the thing is if someone disconnects from your match on your team if your team loses you don't lose your rank but if you win you do gain some sr in halo infinite that's not exactly the case if you lose you're losing your rank that's even if a teammate crashes or just rage quits out of the game which is incredibly frustrating as a player who's trying to progress forward within the ranks like yes your team does matter and you want to make sure you're playing with people who are dedicated to finishing the match but you also need to kind of give forgiveness because this is just matchmaking and at least call of duty recognizes this which is just Crazy. Now in Halo Infinite, have you ever gone into a new tier and then as soon as you get there, you'll lose like four matches in a row and you're right back where you began? Well, that doesn't happen with Call of Duty because they implemented a demotion protection. So as soon as you get to a new tier, so you go from bronze to silver, then you actually get to stay in silver for at least three matches, even if you lose all three of them. I know that might not sound the most fair or makes the most sense, but you also gotta think that this is kind of matchmaking. You kind of have to give players a sense of progression. It's super disheartening, right? When as soon as you get into a new tier, like, all right, I made progression and then you'll lose your matches because your teammates are that great. While we're on the topic of progression, the really important thing with Call of Duty is that you start off at zero. Everyone starts at zero. So you start from bronze and work your way up to whatever tier you can get to. Unlike Halo, it automatically places you one tier below where you should be, just so you get a little bit more sense of progression while you're playing your ranked matches. And from my experience playing Halo, about after like 10-ish matches or so, you're at where you're supposed to be, and there really isn't much of a sense of progression unless you significantly get better at the game. Now, this might sound super unfair to lesser skilled players starting in ranked, but I do believe there is some hidden MMR that's happening with CDL because I'm only bronze three, and I'm coming across players who are very confident at what they're doing within Call of Duty. Here's a really cool thing though. If you are in the top 250, you get a special emblem, special nameplate and stuff like that. That's really cool. But the number one player in the world gets a unique calling card and emblem, one of a kind. I mean, think about that when it comes to YouTube search or content or just Twitch streaming. If you're the number one player in Call of Duty's ranked mode, people are going to watch. There really isn't anything like that with Halo right now, where it's just like, I'm Onyx, but like higher Onyx. Like you see Lucid streaming and he's like, I'm Onyx 2200 something. And you see someone else who's a really good player who's like Onyx 2250 or something. Like it's such a large number that's tough to really determine who is the best player out there. With Call of Duty's essentially champion rank system that they have within here, 
it's really cool, very easy to understand. Like I'm champ at Call of Duty, which is definitely something that's much more understandable to players rather than 1500 Onyx compared to 22 Onyx. Because in Halo, with the Onyx rank, there's a huge skill gap between a low tier Onyx and the top tier Onyx. So what's something that Halo and 343 could walk away with when it comes to looking at what Call of Duty is doing with the ranking system? One thing is definitely earning extra bits of customization for just winning matches. I think that's super important because it provides another level of progression for players. It doesn't matter what skill level you are. As long as you're winning a match, you're making progression. So you still feel like you're being rewarded for playing the game, even if you're not that good at it. In Halo, it feels like a win only matters for that match. And after it's done, you just go on to the next one. Everything's forgotten. There's no carrot at the end of the stick it's just the stick if we can find a way to bring back the champ ring from halo 5 and put that in the halo infinite i think that would be crucial just to be able to identify who really are the best players out there because i was onyx in season one and so was lucid so we're technically the same rank but i think lucid is a little bit better than i am i like the demotion protection that call of duty implements right here where i think it kind of leans more into just giving people some sense of progression and playing the game more. How many times have you played where you've gone from like platinum to diamond or gold to platinum or vice versa, anywhere between, that it's super disheartening when you finally get that new rank and then you just go right back down. And yeah, it makes sense. So if you lose, you lose. If you win, you win. But I do think you have to kind of lean more towards on the side of the players to kind of give them just a sense of progression while playing. Because technically after three or four months, all these ranks reset, you got to do it all over again. And personally, I would like to see the placement matches reduced when it comes to Halo Infinite. I want to just jump in and start ranking up, which is what Modern for 2's ranking system really benefits from. As soon as you jump in, you start playing, you're going up and down in rank. Or in Halo, you have to play 10 whole matches just to get your rank which places you one tier below where you're supposed to be. And then you gotta play more just to be at the skill level where you need to be. And I think we all can recognize that the skill-based matchmaking certainly can recognize what skill level you are, no matter what playlist you're in. The Halo Infinite's rank system feels super grindy with not really much in the way of reward beyond just leveling up. Where in Call of Duty, there is always something to go for when it comes to playing rank. And there is incentive long-term for the season to keep you playing. It just kind of hurts to see Call of Duty do ranked better than Halo, because I do feel like Halo is more competitively viable of a game and it has much more variety when it comes to maps and mode and weapon sandboxes on top of that where like you're basically using like the same three guns all the time in call of duty with halo it's dependent on the sandbox usage i just really want to see halo infinite thrive when it comes to ranks i think there's something really special there as it is one of the most played modes within halo i just feel like the reward for playing ranked isn't just quite there where it needs to be it just feels super basic and doesn't really feel as rewarding no matter what skill level you are it just feels so odd since a lot of these things i'm asking for were present in the previous halo game but not in this one obviously things have certainly changed when it comes to halo infinite so it's just going to be a process, it seems like, with this game to try to get up to par with what other competition is out there. But of course, if we get any more information, I'll share it with you guys here on the channel.